Namaste. My name is Rajika Puri, for those of you who don't know me. I'm a dancer trained basically in Bharatanatyam and Odissi, but what I focus on these days is a form of dance storytelling, which I've developed, in which I not only sing and chant myself as I dance, but also connect the dance sections with narrations in English, and that including speaking in the voices and enacting the various characters in my story. So I'm a storyteller. So as an introduction to today's Odissi performance, I thought I would tell you the story of Odissi at Nittigram, accompanied today by visuals and a few demonstrations. First then, the cast of characters who make up the story, foremost among whom is Jagannath, Lord of the world, the deity who presides over one of the major pilgrimage spots of India, and in whose temple we Urisi dancers imagine we are dancing. Then Urisi, the dance form which originated in his temple and which draws its inspiration from the culture, music, sculpture, folk dances, rituals of the Indian state called Urissa. Kelucharan Mahapatra, one of the major architects of Urisi dance as we know it, maestro, choreographer par excellence, known affectionately as Kelu Babu. He was the teacher of Pratima Gauri Bedi, charismatic dancer and visionary who established a dance village called Nittegram as a serene place away from the bustle of city life where dedicated students could immerse themselves in one of a range of Indian movement forms. And of course, the Nittegram dancers themselves in particular, Shurpa Sen in Bijoyini Satpati, who will be dancing tonight, who with Lynn Fernandez, managing trustee of Nithagram, and its fabulous lighting designer, by the way, forms the core of this institution today. The story of Urisi in brief. The image of Jagannath we saw earlier is housed in a temple complex at the coastal town of Puri in Urissa. By the way, Puri means city in Sanskrit, and it has no connection with my last name. Puri lies in the state of Orissa, as I said, on the northeastern part of the coast of India. And the temple actually houses three related deities. Jagannath, whom you see on the right with the dark face, is a form of Vishnu, protector of the universe, whose most popular avatar incarnation is that of Krishna. Next to him is his sister, Subhadra, and on our left, his brother, Balaram. The temple is the site of one of the most famous festivals of India, the Ratha Yatra, annual journey of the chariots, during which images of the main deities housed in these three huge chariots are pulled along a ceremonial way by devotees. There have been occasions when people have actually thrown themselves under the wheels of the chariot, hoping to get instant moksha, salvation. And the English word juggernaut, referring to an unstoppable force, comes from the name Jagannath. The traditional performers of what we call Urisi today were maharis, auspicious women dedicated to temple service, who performed during temple rituals, both inside and even up to very recently, someone told me that she was able to hear one of the old Maharis sing to Jagannath to put him to sleep. The dancers danced in the dance hall within the temple. But since these women were sacred, they did not perform outside the temple. Instead, they were represented at temple festivals by boy dancers called Godipuas. It's a joy to watch them because they're really kids who are made up and costumed as women and who perform pretty much the same repertoire, but they're very, very limber. You do know that Orissi was really discovered, in a way, by dancers from outside Orissa only in the 50s and 60s. And at that time, the repertoire was very limited. They went and studied from the Maharis um, and their teachers, and they perhaps five to six rows of dances with about three to five minutes each. So that Orissi performance was just about 20 minutes those days. These Gotipuas are from a village near Puri, Ragurajpur, which happens also to be the village where Kelu Charan Mahapatra was born. The village is known for its paintings, such as the one where we saw the three deities, as also for its wood carving, 
two skills that Guru Kedu Babu also learned as a child. The image of Jagannath, when you see it um, even in somebody's house in, in worship, is usually covered during rituals. He's better seen in this carved figure, which allows you to note why this figure is the inspiration for the basic stance of Orissi, usually accompanied by this arm position, called choke, square, represented in a stone bar relief found on a temple wall in Bhuvaneshwar. More frequently seen in temple friezes are variations of stances called bhanga, in which the torso, head, and hips shift off center to a greater or lesser degree. These bhanga are from the pillars of the dance hall at the Sun Temple of Konark, some miles up the coast from Puri. Many poses have names. The one on the left, Tarpana, mirror. On the right, Alasa, lazing. There are manuscripts written on dried palm leaves with drawings of poses, often accompanied by verses, which describe these bhanga. Like the one called Vinakara, playing the ancient sitar-like instrument, Veena. Pada chanda chandra gauri, bama hasta mrigga mauri, taksha tarjani kataka muka, saachi lochana tribanga reka, ukshipta shira chinna matte, bhangi vina kara sura prasitta. Place the feet in the moon position, left hand in the animal pose, fingers of the right form a link in a chain, look straight ahead with a triple bend line. Throw up the head from a bent torso, the Bhangi Veenakara, playing the Veena that pleases the gods. Another pose, Mardala, refers to the two-headed drum, also called Pakhavaj, which you will hear played tonight. On the left of this temple frieze is the Mardala position. The dynamic of Odissi involves shift from choke to a Bhanga, to another Bhanga. The Pakhavaj is absolutely crucial to Odissi performance because its rhythms lead the dancer's feet not just on stage, but also in class. This is a very young Kelucharan Mahapatra with the instrument he played superbly, which means he was also master of the Ukutta, the Uriya name for the drum syllables you hear recited during Indian dance performances. These syllables are supposed to capture vocally the sounds made by the coverage, elementary, um, syllables are used to teach the drum with a different sound attached to each way of striking the instrument. Tak, da, din, kitti taka, and so on. And so I think somebody who plays the drum actually um, learns it through the sound and that is connected. It's sort of ear to hand coordination. There are other sounds which are used during performance, and that's what you will hear, and sometimes they're even sung. Jam, tari jam, tari jam, ta jam jam, ta kiti taka jam, against which the dancers, of course, do these counter rhythms. The movements that accompany this kind of abstract or rhythmic music attempt to make visible and audible its rhythm.